Hi. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is Brandon, everybody. Say hello to the internet. Hi, internet. Are you ready for this? I think I'm ready for it. There should be some pretty cool stuff in here, uh, some stuff that we haven't gotten in the shop in a long time. I think you guys are going to be really excited to see them. Box number uno, right? Is that, yes! Is, 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 see, I, you, know, I, you know, sometimes did you, I catch on. Did you watch like on. a billion of boxes before this? <laughs> I did used to watch them even as a customer, so oh, uh, I'm hoping that like, you know, Robert and uh, Corey are, are seeing it and hopefully I continue some of the traditions. So. All right. All right. Let's see if I can do that. Oh! <laughs> I know, I know. Robert used to we like kind of str no, struggle with that, Robert's but getting to suck at that. So, uh... <laughs> so you do order our fish for us. Mm -hmm. well, let's just preface by saying that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, now that Robert's kind of uh, moved on, not dead, but you know, just been promoted. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> He's passed the torch on to ordering the fish to me. So uh, if you guys ever have any questions or want to know what's come in, I post every week on the forum too. So. That's the best place to find out if you're local to us and you want to come and pick up some of these really cool fish. Box number uno. What's this? Ooh, okay, starting off with a really cool fish. So these are the Splash Tetris. Super cool uh, paludarium fish. These guys are called Splash Tetris because they, uh, the males uh, and the females, when they mate, uh, they will hop out of the water onto a plant leaf. So something like, you know, in the tropics, it could be like a philodendron or anything, you know, and they'll lay their eggs on there now and do their whole business. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, then they'll lay the eggs up there almost like a frog where they're out of the water. Right. And so then the male, I think I think it's just the male, it could be both the both parents, but then they'll splash water up onto the leaf to yeah, kind of keep it's them. It's fantastic uh, looking. Keep like, them like nice and wet so that way they don't dry out but yeah no super cool fish when I saw these on the uh, on the order list I was like you know what and these are the sp four spot variety I think there's a, a couple of different species but these are really cool awesome fish uh, do you know how much they'll cost because you know I think so we have a group of them next door and I think they're only like 10 bucks so get yourself a pair uh, I, I think there should be males and females in here these ones are like the males usually have the bigger finnage uh, to kind of keep the eggs wet on the leaves but yeah you should be able to find a pair they are tetra so you might want to try and get yourself like a small colony maybe like five or six perfect for paludariums or if you have them in a normal aquarium drop the water line a little bit get some immersive plant growth kind of like an archer fish kind yeah of exactly yeah, yeah yeah very very uh similar setup to that uh i imagine they're like tan into waters and stuff too so you could get really creative with kind of a, a nice kind of real natural looking setup for these guys uh but yeah off to the start with a you know a really cool fish. <laughs> we can end the unboxing right now. Be super yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> let's wrap this up. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> let's see what's next. All right, so here we got just uh, ooh, these are cool uh, type of auto synclis. These are called the Galaxy Autos. Uh, about the same size, same care requirements as the common auto synclis. Uh, but these guys, it's hard to see now, but they uh, they do get kind of this like kind of spotted kind of color to them. You know, a lot of people, they always think that they are sick because they think that they're, it's ick or something, but no, oh, okay. that's just their cool pattern. So this is interesting. So these are clown killies, pretty much the, the best top dwelling fish uh, for a nano aquarium. These guys uh, have been coming in pretty regularly, but I, I remember during COVID times, we couldn't get a hand, our hands on these at all. So many people asking for them, and then finally we've gotten them in kind of regularly again. It was coming in a lot smaller than they used to though. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you can see that there's still like some kind of bigger males in there. Um, but yeah, there's, you know, they're, they're kind of a, a perfect uh, companion fish for shrimp. I always tell the customers, you know, any fish could potentially eat the baby shrimp, but when these guys pretty much hang out only on the top of the water, uh, the chances of them eating your baby shrimp are very slim. This is a, a really awesome fish. This is the Shodenai Puffer. The, the name changes all the time. Sometimes they go by Spotted Congo, sometimes they're called the Leopard Puffer. But these are a freshwater, uh, about the size of a lemon. I usually tell the customers that they're like a mini Murphy. So in general, this is a very community safe puffer. Still would not put it with things with really overly long fins or anything like that. But if I read the list correctly, I think we might've gotten a couple of them. So we'll see. Oh, these are just blue mystery snails, which would be food for the <laughs> Shodenai puffer. Here's the second Shodenai. Oh wow, they're sending multiple. Yeah. I think last time I ordered them, I only got one. So I was stoked when I saw two that I actually got the two that I ordered. Is Dean still working with these? He wants to sell his. Yeah, I was like, I, I figured. 
All right, what do we have here? So here we have the Celestial Pearl Danios. I think Ooh, one of my mine. Favorites. Yep, one of mine and Jimmy's favorites. These fish, uh, I love them. As a kid, I would go fishing with my dad and uh, we'd catch rainbow trout. And I remember these guys would always just remind me of, of rainbow trout or fishing. And they don't get much bigger than kind of what you see here. These guys are actually getting yeah, those pretty, pretty good chunky. size. All right, and these sparkling grommies. Oh, I love these. Again, one of my favorite fish too. You can do a single one of these or you can try and aim for a pair, but I like a group of them because then you get that like kind of audible croaking or it's like somewhere between like a, a frog croak and a bird chirp, you know? Really? You it's can hear a, it through the, I've yeah. never heard that before. Yeah, in my house it gets really quiet and they usually do it when I first turn off or the lights turn off. If you listen closely, it's very random and I try to catch it on, on uh, film and I'm sure you can find YouTube videos of it, but Fun little fish, full of personality. They'll kind of squabble with each other, but that's when they actually let out that audible kind of croak that they're, the, that's their other name. We got dwarf anchor catfish. These are Thatch's favorite. Yeah, super cool little nano fish. I always tell people they're kind of like crossbows, you know, they have those real rigid pectoral fins to them. These fish, very underrated. They kind of hang out in one spot. They love to hang out in wood. Uh, mine always hang out under my sponge filters. Uh, I would say get yourself a small group of these, maybe like three or four of them. They love wood, love tannins. Uh, don't expect to see them a ton as they kind of, kind yeah. of like to hide out. Uh, in fact, a lot of people forget that they have yeah. them in their highly planted They're tanks until they see them. Hi, I'm Irene with Aquarium Co-op, and when I was setting up my first aquarium, I couldn't wait to get some beautiful fish to brighten up our home. Unfortunately, I got some mollies with some kind of crazy lethal bacterial disease, which I accidentally spread from the quarantine tank to my main tank, and then it wiped out everything. I seriously quit the hobby for almost a year. Thankfully, Aquarium Co-op has spent tens of thousands of dollars in research and development to find the best broad spectrum medications on the market. The quarantine medication trio consists of Marison, Paracleanse, and Ikex. We've safely used them with our freshwater fish, snails, shrimp, and aquarium plants. Now, if you know what the disease your fish has, of course, use the proper medication and just follow the instructions on the package. But if you aren't sure what the disease is, or if you just purchase new fish and want to make sure they're clean, you can use all three meds at the same time. Dose one packet of Marison, one packet of Paracleanse, and one teaspoon of Ikex for every 10 gallons of water. Just leave the fish alone for a week, don't feed them, and then do a water change afterwards. And that's it. Ever since I found out about the Quarantine Med Trio, the number of diseases in my tanks has drastically dropped. So to get your own trio, go to aquariumcoop.com. Next bag, we got a super cool, these guys are called the Gold Dust Bashir. This is kind of an unusual Bashir for us. A lot of people say Bashir, Bashir. It's Bashir. These guys will get easily the size of your arm. So I'd say plan to have a big aquarium for these guys. True carnivores, um, I wouldn't necessarily call them aggressive, but like with any fish, if it fits in their mouth, they'll probably eat it. So uh, plan for like a big monster fish kind of community tank. And I think these guys will be really awesome. These are the Hillstream loaches. These are the reticulated variety. Are these your favorite to catch in the store? <laughs> you know what? I'll take these guys over the Borneo suckers. Those guys are even harder. Uh, the, the Hillstream loaches aren't, aren't too bad. But yeah, we got a good little group of these. What's cool about these is I love seeing them on the glass and in the bags because you can uh, see their, their, almost like their organs. So a lot of times you can see their little hearts beating. You really want to make sure that they benefit from added oxygen. So make sure you're running an air stone in your sponge filter. Um, they, they do like flow as well. So a, another candidate for kind of a stream style aquarium. Easy to breed as well if you have a good group. I know, I think Corey was breeding them in his 800 gallon, not purposely, but they just kind of showed up. This is the flat flyer pleco. Super cool fish. Now this guy's a pretty decent size. The that last one I huge. brought on. Tiny little guy. What's cool about these is uh, they're called flat flyers because their pectoral fins, as they get older, develop almost like wings. These guys, I believe, are in that six to, to eight range, so decent sized fish. Uh, but the you know, I don't know if you can see that, and but their uh, their little pectoral fins almost have feathers on them. Pea puffers, everyone's favorite pint-sized puffer fish. Great for nano aquariums. Uh, 
We have so many next door. You want to order some more? Yeah, yeah, yeah. These guys, I like to always keep the tank full because, as you know, they don't always get along well with their uh, tank mates, and each one of them has their own personality. So if you find one that's a little honory, that's just how they are. It's kind of like dogs, right? Some dogs will chase every cat that they see. Some pea puffers will chase every fish that's in the tank with them. So we recommend species only with those guys or fast moving, peaceful fish. Next up, we have Borneo sucker loaches. Kind of a cousin to the uh, reticulated the hill you're talking about? Yeah, these guys are the ones that if you really want to uh, prank your fish uh, monger or fish catcher, ask for a specific one of these. These are hard. They'll come out of the tank and we're still trying to like get them off the, out of the, the water. Do you use the credit card thing? Yeah, or anything? credit okay. card works really great. Uh, I usually try to grab something that they're on, like a cave or something, uh -huh. and then put the net underneath it and pull it out of the water. Yeah. That's the best way, but uh, yeah, if you really want to, you know, kind of test your fish catcher's ability, make them catch an individual one of these. These are the peacock eels. True freshwater eel. These guys you won't see a lot in your tank though, because they are sand burrowers or substrate burrowers. So these guys will kind of stir it up. You might have to look for them. I think their favorite foods are going to be like worms, like blood worms, two effects, brine shrimp, all that good stuff. Next up, we have. These are the zigzag spiny eels, like a cousin to the, the fish that we just talked about. These guys stay quite a bit smaller, so I'd say probably in a 29 to 40 gallon breeder oh, you could yeah. do these. These guys are almost like noodles, a little bit bigger than say like the coolie loaches for sure, but same kind of behavior. Again, same thing. These guys, I think the biggest complaint that I get from people is that they hide out in the substrate. The crocodile toothpick fish. These things are extremely tiny. I'd say these are probably the most nano fish that we have <laughs> in the shop. These are basically, uh, think of them almost as pint-sized freshwater pipefish, almost in the same family as, as uh, seahorses. The trouble is a lot of people think, you know, you can just feed them once a day. These guys you want to feed multiple times a day, which if, when you're doing live foods like baby brine and daphnia can be a little hard, but they're notorious for only wanting live food and they have those real tiny mouths, so it's gotta be really small and kind of attract their attention. But very cool fish if you're looking for kind of a, a, a project fish to work with. Ooh, okay, so we got some big snakeskin discus. Wow, those came in large. You can see, here's my hand yeah. for size comparison. With the, the shop expansion coming, I think I'm hoping to have these guys year round, but normally we take a break in the spring and summer of them just because uh, we need a spot for our koi and our goldfish. Uh, so it'll be exciting to have more of these guys for sale year round. Bosmani rainbows. Yeah, look how gorgeous these came in. These are straight out of the box too, people. So these are already coming wow. out. I think this is the first time in my receiving of fish that they've come in this colored up right out of the box. So they must have been real happy in the <laughs> box. The females are less colorful, but it's always recommended to have the females in with the, the, the males when you're talking rainbow fish. The males just color up a lot more, gives them something to show off to. And these guys are looking really good this week. Last bag here, we have the marble hatchets. Great top dwelling fish for anywhere between, I like them in a 20 gallon or more. These guys get nice little, almost like leopard pattern to them. Don't get much bigger. I'd say they'll probably potentially double in size of what you see here. With all hatchet fish, all killifish, make sure you have a lid on them. These guys can be a little bit more difficult to feed. I'd say recommend feeding freeze dried, something like Daphnia or flake food, something that sits on the top uh, a long time for them. They have small mouths, which means they need small food that floats up at the top. But yeah, great little fish to end the uh, unboxing. Thank you for hosting <laughs> yeah, your very of course. first unboxing. I think you did a fantastic job. Like I said, you have wonderful taste in fish. And <laughs> thank we'll you. hope to see you again in the future. Yeah, of course. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. And uh, I hope to keep showing you guys some cool new fish that we get. Bye-bye, everybody. All right, bye.